Very first time was college at a party, cocaine. It made all my fears go away. I went from being real shy to real loud. John Harding Lucas II, born October 31st, 1953. March 13th, 1986, a man left his house in a suit, five pair of athletic socks, a briefcase, and no shoes. The man woke up in the parking lot and began frantically searching for his car after remembering he had an early start professional basketball game at 2 p.m. Not able to find his car in time, the man decided to call in sick and miss the game that day, and in fact the rest of the NBA season. Yes, that man was an NBA player. Actually a starting point guard on a contending team, averaging 15.5 points a game and nearly 9 assists. His team without him went to the NBA Finals that season, losing 4 games to 2 to the Boston Celtics. That man was John Lucas, a forgotten great point guard whom if the Rockets had for that fateful series may have just went all the way and given Houston its first ever championship. Think of how much that could have changed the journey of Lucas as a player and what that may have meant for his Hall of Fame chances. With as much mentoring talent Lucas has, imagine what influence he could have had today with Hall of Famer before or after his name. But he just couldn't stop using cocaine. In his early life and career, Lucas was an outstanding athlete, not just basketball, but a dominant tennis player all the way through his four years at the University of Maryland, winning two singles championships in 74 and 76. Named an All-American in the sport and the conference's top all-around athlete. Doing all this while a three-time All-American in basketball, leading his team in scoring every season except his freshman year. He went on to be the number one pick in the 1976 NBA Draft over four future Hall of Famers, including Dennis Rodman, who was a handful of spots from not even being drafted at all. The Houston Rockets had high hopes for Lucas when they took the point guard over some great bigs and wing players in the draft, hoping with all their scoring he could come in and be a floor general and keep the guys happy. In meeting his head coach for the first time, he ordered Lucas to shooting contests from different areas on the court with the team's best scorers and John lost every time. It was done to let him know without confusion that he was brought in to feed these guys who were clearly better scorers than he was. Lucas understood and his NBA career as an assist man became the most memorable element of his journey. But even more memorable in his 14 years and 6 teams unfortunately was all the opportunity he blew in the league because he just couldn't stop using cocaine and it led to an underwhelming career. What happened? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. John Lucas was a 6'3 point guard shooting guard from Durham, North Carolina that today is one of the pillars of substance abuse recovery for athletes that have lost their way. Before this, his journey after high school began at the University of Maryland, which he chose because they allowed him to play both tennis and basketball. Three months out the year, he'd focus on tennis and the rest in the sport he was destined to star. He says he liked basketball more because the attention it gave him. In tennis, 300 people came to his match, in basketball, 3,000. He also liked winning. In tennis, it satisfied his individual need to win, while in hoops, he enjoyed sharing those moments with his team. As mentioned, he was a three-time All-American and talented scorer that averaged 18.3 points per game for his career, along with five assists before deciding to choose basketball as his professional route over tennis because of the guaranteed money. Even though he was drafted in both sports, not to mention also selected by the ABA, Houston took him number one overall. Stunt number one, the devil has come to collect. As a former drug addict, John Lucas, when looking back on his career, does
doesn't like to remember the first times this or that happened when it pertains to using cocaine. But it's all a part of a history he was lucky enough to turn around at some point. But back in the 80-81 season, his fifth in the NBA, he learned that the fun was over and it was time to pay up for all the fun rides on the white horse. For Lucas, addiction began in college. He was introduced at a college party, peer pressured into this new drug becoming popular in the 70s and taking many lives and careers with it in the 80s, cocaine. He liked it because it didn't have a smell like tobacco, marijuana, or even alcohol. Nobody knew you were a user if you didn't want them to. His favorite thing was it made him come out of his shell as a person. He was usually the shy and quiet guy in the room, but when he was beamed up off that Natalie Portman, he was outgoing and loud. Many people enjoyed his company in that state, which as a point guard is really what you want. By his fifth year in the NBA, his cocaine use was completely hidden from the league until March 1981 when he missed his sixth NBA game without permission. Before then, he was missing practices and games and would usually have an excuse like, oh, my daughter had an air infection and I had to take her to the hospital, until the team had enough. He was suspended for the remainder of the season and lost his job because of it for the first time in his career after Golden State decided not to re-sign him. Stunt number two, losing job number two. Fitting this being his second growth stunt, Lucas lost his second chance with the Washington Bullets who signed him in free agency after the Warriors had enough. This is a guy who was having an outstanding first few seasons in the league. As a rookie, he averaged 11 points and 5.6 assists per game as a starter right out the gate and made first team all rookie. He then upped those to 12 points a game and 9.4 assists, good for second in the league. In year three, borderline all-star numbers of 16 points a game and 9.3 assists his first year with the Warriors and his third straight season playing all 82 games. In 79-80, his numbers began to slip and by the following season, he was losing control of his cocaine addiction and on the verge of being suspended for the first time and everyone finding out his great big secret. Remember, under the radar is why he fell in love with coke in the first place. Now and for the rest of his life, everyone would know about his drug of choice. After admitting to the bullets he had a serious addiction, they allowed him to leave the team and check into rehab, but soon after, waived him in 1983. It was chance number two, blown on a drug he thought was harmless and made him feel he could do anything way back in his college days. He played just 35 games before being waived and left the NBA to go play tennis. But by then, he was too far behind the competition having not played the sport in over six years. Stunt number three, they say third time's a charm. Not for John Lucas. You would think by now Lucas would realize what he had and was losing having to play another sport along within minor leagues while exiled from the NBA and losing everything he worked for, but no. He received a third chance at being the player he was selected to be, but his addiction to cocaine and alcohol by that point, not to mention it now being full-bloom cocaine decade of decades, he fell off the Justin Bieber again. The Spurs gave him a shot for one season in 83-84 and he was still productive to say the least. It was the first time and only time in his career that he averaged a double-double of 10 points and 10 assists. He played in 63 games and started more than half of them, although the team failed to make the playoffs leading to his release. The Rockets would sign him in 84 and waive him the same year because he was still using and missing practices and games. Given a fourth chance, Houston reinstated him for the 85-86 season, whereas mentioned, he was having a great year. On the best team of his career, two rehabs and four chances removed from his first time being caught using cocaine when he infamously went to that bar in 86 in socks for shoes. 
missing his game the next day and being waived by his best chance to lead a team to a chip. Believe it or not, he received a fifth chance signed by the Bucks for one season where he averaged career highs in points a game and three-point percentage as a starter. They made the playoffs but eliminated in the first round by the Hawks. He was a shell of himself ever since. All in all, John Lucas still was a solid player in the NBA. Imagine what he could have been had he never picked up cocaine in college. Possibly one of the greatest point guards of all time. Now he spends his time helping other athletes going through similar situations and is known for his basketball training and camps across the nation. He was even an NBA coach from 92 to 2002. He had so much greatness in him, sadly we only got to see scratches of his potential. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out.